What's going on UFC fans? Welcome back to the MMA Business Hour. In today's episode, we're going to go over all the fights for UFC 288 this Saturday in Newark, New Jersey. It's going to be an awesome fight. It's cool that uh, Aljamain Sterling gets to fight in front of his uh, home crowd at the Prudential Center. Uh, it's going to be a great fight between him and Cejudo. But unfortunately, we have some breaking news. Bryce Mitchell is out. He is out in the Mavzara Iolev fight. Replacing him is Diego Lopez. We'll get into that fight a little bit later. I want to start with a couple uh, prelim fights. I don't want to talk about all of them. I think that's a waste of everybody's time. But there are three fights I want to talk about. First, we're going to get to Chaos Williams and Rolando Bedoya. This guy, Bedoya, check this out. He's 26 years old, right? And if you scroll down here, his first fight... Was in 2014. What? He was, I think he was 16 going on 17 in that first fight. Unbelievable, right? Pretty unbelievable for uh, Mr. Rolando Bedoya. He's taking on Chaos Williams. This is uh, Bedoya's first fight in the UFC. So if he goes out and starts as a veteran like Chaos Williams, man, who's fought some really good competition. He's 13-3 uh, in his professional career so far. But the guys fought some, you know, some dogs. Michelle Pajeda, he fought. Uh, Matt Semmelsberger is a tough guy. Miguel Baeta, he lost to Randy Brown in the split decision, who's really uh, tough. So this will be a good fight for Chaos Williams to get back on track, too, if he wants to make one more push. All right, so who do we think is going to win that fight? I mean, I never like to bet on someone who's making their UFC debut. He's currently ranked number three in Peru. Cass Williams is the 23rd ranked welterweight in the world, in, according to Tapology. I think I'm going to go with the veteran here in Chaos Williams for sure. His striking is probably going to be a lot better. Bedoya has fought nearly the same competition, and I'll go with the competition, especially because this is Bedoya's first fight in the UFC. Then we move up the card to Devin Clark versus... Kennedy and Jokaku, uh, eleven and three, fighting Devin Clark, who is fourteen and seven. Okay, this is a light heavyweight fight, but Kennedy and Jokaku, man, he's got some crazy power in his hands. He's coming off some really good work. Oh, also, Chukwu here to start round three. Marquez Carter this might be over soon. How about that? Oh, my God. Turn it on. That's oh. it. And Joe Chaku is a really good young fighter. He's got a lot of promise, and he's fighting a savvy veteran in Devin Clark, who's fought, you know, the who's who in the light heavyweight division. Devin Clark seems like he's been around forever. He is 33, so he's getting up there in age. He's, you know, once you get into the mid 30s, it's usually downhill from there. But he's like a another guy who wins one, he loses one. He had a big. Uh, really impressive victory against Alonzo Menafield, who everyone knows is super jacked. He's a pretty talented fighter as well. Then he fought Anthony Smith. Uh, he lost a triangle choke, but Anthony Smith is really good on the ground. And we all know Lionheart is a great competitor. Then he went on to fight Ion Kuntalaba, who, you know, he's another fighter. Kuntalaba has a lot of talent, but he kind of, you know, lets his emotions get... He fights emotional a lot of the time. And when he was fighting like Ankalaev, he got blasted into another dimension. But I do like uh, Devin Clark. But I think uh, Kennedy's definitely going to win this fight for sure. I like Devin, but Kennedy and Joe Chiku is... I think he is a star in the making. He, with this win, then he's going to be, you know, hovering around the top 15. And then we get on to the, the without a doubt, the best... Prelim of the night, we got Drew Dober versus Matt Frivola. Uh, I think I like Dober here. Frivola has uh, fought well as of late. Currently a 10-3 and record, and he fights out of Gracie Tampa South. Steamroller Frivola. He's got two wins in a row uh, against Valdez and uh, Ottoman Azatar, which was a really impressive Impressive win for him. But Matt Frivola has not fought a guy 
like Drew Dober yet. Drew Dober is an absolute savage. He's really, really tough. He's got a pretty decent ground game, but he's got a ton of power in his hands, and he's extremely durable. Uh, Dur- uh, Drew Dober has won three fights in a row, coming off wins on Terrence McKinney, Raphael Alves, and Bobby Green. That Bobby Green KO was epic because he was getting pieced up a little bit on the feet in that fight. But Dober was able to bite that on the mouthpiece and blast him with a left hook that flatlined Bobby Green. That one right there. See how he's landing, sneaking it in there to that liver. Ooh, nice left hand by Dober there. These guys are trading. Man, but you see that. Is that what I want? I like Drew Dober. I think he's kind of coming into his zone. He's got like another two or three year window because he's a little bit older, but he's in incredible shape. He's got great cardio and he's definitely a top 15 fighter for sure. So I'm definitely going with Drew Dober in this one. So, okay, we're going to move on to the main card. The first fight is Cron Gracie versus Charles Jordan. Charles Jordan is a He's as tough as it comes. He's the most, one of the most game fighters in the UFC. He's got crazy knees, spinning attacks, elbows. He's got decent chokes, too. He's really good. And Kron Gracie is making his return. He hasn't fought in three years when he lost a decision to Cub Swanson. He kind of got away from his grappling roots in that fight against Cub Swanson and got into a striking match with Cub, who's a really good boxer, and ended up losing a decision there. And he's taking some time off, so I wonder if he worked on his hands. I would assume so because his ground game is super elite, but his hands, you know, are still coming along and developing three years ago when he lost to Cub Swanson. So I, they didn't do him any favors by giving him Charles Jordan, that's for sure, because Jordan is an absolute savage. 13-6, and six, I and mean, he's lost a lot of close decisions, but he's a... He's one of my favorite fighters in the UFC. He's super exciting from bell to bell. I mean, he's uh, his last couple fights against Burg- Burgos and uh, Nathaniel Wood. Decisions. The Burgos fight, people thought he sh- should have won that fight. He's lost two in a row, but both of those fights he could have won. I like Charles Jordan. He's a really, really good fighter. And I'm going to pick him to beat Cron Gracie in this fight. Unless, I mean, Cron Gracie has to take him down and keep him there, and Charles Jordan is really slick. I haven't looked at the odds for Cron Gracie and Charles Jordan yet. I wait to a little later later in the week to do like look into the bets and the odds that I like. But unless Cron has really developed his striking, he's going to be in a lot of trouble because Charles Jordan is like, I think. A way more dangerous opponent than Cub Swanson is. Cub is pretty much a boxer, but Jordan has really good leg kicks, really good knees, dangerous elbows. He's super talented. So I'm going to go Charles Jordan because Kron hasn't been in the octagon for almost three years. Then we move on to Mavzar Ivalev versus Diego Lopez. I'm definitely going Ivalev here. I think he's going to take him down and submit him in the first round. So a first round submission is an interesting bet here. I haven't seen the odds yet, but Diego Lopez is a very inexperienced fighter, and he's lost fights on the regional scene. He is not on the on the level of Ivalev. I mean, if he goes out there and just darts him, wow, what a platform. But it's kind of disappointing that we lost Bryce Mitchell, who is a fan favorite, to and to replace him with Diego Lopez for a pay-per-view is kind of bush league in my opinion. I don't love it. People who have bought the pay-per-view already probably don't love it. I mean, this card, you know, just got worse. We're already missing some good fights, but it stinks that Bryce Mitchell's out. I haven't seen what the injury was, but that sucks. And he was saying that he was fighting sick the last time when he got destroyed by Ilya Taporia. So who knows what's going on with Bryce? And then we move up the card to uh, Yan Zonan and uh, Jessica Andraj. This is going to be a really really good fight. Jessica Andrade, everyone knows, is one of the toughest fighters in the UFC. She's small and compact and extremely tough. She just lost a what uh, she lost by choke to Aaron Blanchfield who's on the up and up. She had the decision win over Lauren Murphy who's really tough and Amanda Limos and Cynthia Cavillo. Really really good wins. She lost to uh, Shevchenko for the belt and lost 
in a grappling fight to Courtney Dubois. And then she had wins over Kat, uh, Rose. She's got wins over Rose Nami Yunus, Catherine Chichkegian. Jessica Andrade is as tough as it comes. But Zunan is also extremely tough. She's been on the up and up as of late. She's She trains with Team Alpha Male, who knows. Everybody knows that they're a great camp with great wrestling. And I think, you know, and she was able to beat Mackenzie Dern for, via majority decision. So we know her ground game is really solid. So will her striking be able to hold up with Jessica and Andrade's? Andrade has a ton of power. So I'm going to go with that power today. I think Jessica Andrade is going to get it done. And then we move on to the co-main event in the evening. We got Bilal Muhammad and Gilbert Burns. This is, without a doubt, my favorite fight on the card. I was watching a lot of tape on Bilal Muhammad the last couple days, and in that fight with Sean Brady, Sean Brady was winning a lot of those exchanges early in round one and round two. Uh, Bilal Muhammad, I think a good strategy for Gilbert Burns in this fight is uh, Bilal Muhammad is really heavy on that lead leg to throw the right hand. So Bilal Muhammad, he also was getting pieced up by uh, Brady's overhand right and a left hook. And we know Gilbert Burns throws a heavy, heavy right hook. So I like Gilbert Burns in this fight. I think I don't think Bilal Muhammad is going to be able to take Gilbert Burns down and hold him down. He might get a takedown here and there, but I don't see any way that he's going to be able to hold him there and be able to, like, Big brother him and beat him up on the ground. I don't see. I don't foresee that happening at all. If he wants to get in another striking match with Gilbert Burns, Gilbert Burns is a lot stronger and he throws a lot harder than Sean Brady does. So I think Bilal Muhammad has a you know upward. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be an uphill battle for sure against Gilbert Burns. Gilbert Burns I think fought like three and a half weeks ago against Masvidal and beat the brakes off of him, and he felt so good that he was willing to go right back into camp and get another fight. That's the only thing that concerns me from a betting perspective is the sh- you know, relatively short notice to hop in and fight a guy like Muhammad who is really really tough. His hands have gotten better and we'll see just see how much better they have gotten. Cuz Sean Brady was kind of getting the best of him in those stand-up exchanges, but then at towards I think it was like the end of the second round, Sean Brady it was just like a a, a light switch turned out. And his cardio just got zapped. His hands were down, and Bilal Muhammad was able to piece him up and get the TKO stoppage there. But I'm going to go with Gilbert Burns here to win this and potentially leapfrog Colby Covington to get that title shot against Leon Edwards. That's what I want to happen. I think that's what the fans want to happen. Colby Covington, go kick rocks, bro. You haven't fought in like three years. Gilbert Burns has fought Hamzat Masvidal and now Bilal Muhammad. He fought Wonderboy Thompson too, I think. Like, give the title shot to Gilbert Burns. Come on. All right, then we go to the main event of the evening. We have Aljamain Sterling versus Henry Cejudo. From a betting perspective, I am not laying any juice on this fight at all. Maybe two, over two and a half rounds. We'll see what those odds are looking like when they come out later in the week. But, oh my goodness. do Does their wrestling negate each other? Then we get a stand-up? I don't know. And Aljo fights Southpaw. I don't remember seeing uh, Henry Cejudo fight a Southpaw anytime soon, anytime lately. I mean, he fought TJ Dillashaw that kind of likes to switch stances, and Dominic Cruz likes to switch stances too. But if you watch the Marlon Marais fight, he was having a lot of success with leg kicks against Henry Cejudo. So much so that we see Henry Cejudo over his last couple fights really implement those leg kicks into his game. And Aljo likes to throw leg kicks. He likes to kind of throw leg kicks, throw a couple punches, and work in to get a shot. But I, I don't know. Do you think he's going to try to take down Henry Cejudo? Good luck with that, Aljo. So, man, this fight. Yeah, I mean, I could see this fight going the distance for sure. I don't see a finish happening unless somebody gets caught. But Henry Cejudo is a lot stronger than people give him credit for, and he's got really good power. So Henry Cejudo to win by finish, that's an interesting bet that I'm going to look at too towards the end of the week. But 
And Henry Cejudo is just a student of the game. If you watch his training camp with John Jones, he pretty much called play by play how that fight was going to end for John Jones, right? In some of his footage, you see him in that same position that John Jones is, and then when he switches over to the other side of the choke and got the finish, Henry Cejudo like mapped that out for John Jones. John Jones took that advice and got the finish super early against Cyril Gaon. So Henry is so sharp. He's going to know everything that's coming at him. But Aljamain Sterling is just an absolute beast, man. And Henry Cejudo has been out of the game for a while. He's been doing this whole YouTube thing. Like, how much wrestling is he really doing? I'm really curious to see what their weight is going to be like towards the end of the week. Like, if either one of them have trouble making 135. Because um, Marab has said that Aljo is considering moving up to 145. So, and when he does weigh in at 135, Aljo is like, Man, he looks like almost like Conor McGregor, like making that weight. He looks so shredded and skinny, sucked out. So we'll see how the weight is. But Henry Cejudo has been looking a little chunky lately compared to what he was earlier in his career. I'm not saying he's chunky, but he looks thicker at this point in his career. So I wonder how he, what his, his uh, weight, walking around weight is, if he's going to have trouble or not. We'll see what happens. But all right, I'm going to go, oh my God, I don't even know. I want to, my heart wants to say Aljo is going to win, but then Henry is just so dynamic. So for this prediction, I'm going Henry Cejudo. So we're going Henry Cejudo, Gilbert Burns, Jessica Andras, Movzar Ivalov, Charles Jordan, Drew Dober, Kennedy Njokaku, and uh, Chaos Williams. For the W's this weekend at UFC 288. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you haven't yet, my best bets have been crushing it. Check out the bets three. My best bet of the week has three wins in a row. We're providing some awesome content for you guys. So go subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll catch you guys on the next fight. Peace.